Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Zoom with us. My name's Jose, and today I have a really special guest with me. But before we get into that, do me a favor, go ahead, subscribe, like, and share the content. As always, I greatly appreciate it. So today's guest is my friend Orly Shamir, who happens to be a blind chef. Orly, how are you? I'm great, Jose. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me. Um, so, you know, Orly, I saw on Facebook that you have a website. Can you tell us what the name of the website is and what it's all about? Sure, absolutely. Um, just a few months ago, I started my own website and it's called Nourished by Light and uh, nourishedbylight.com. And I'm setting it up and putting, in, or putting on content um, I, I want to help people. I just graduated from culinary school in January mm -hmm. and I want to focus on um, creating cooking shows and it's, it's definitely to inspire people and to, to teach about, uh, about food, about healthier options. Um, but I also want to help people through addiction, uh, through food hopefully beat addiction of, of any kind. And um, it's something that helped me over the years. And uh, I want to bring it, uh, bring it out there and, and also share a lot of cool recipes and, and uh, inspire the people to get in their kitchen and, and start cooking. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to my island, Orly's Island, I call it. And today I've been prepping and getting things ready to make stuffed peppers. And today a bit of a healthier variation on stuffed peppers with uh, ground turkey and uh, different vegetables. Here in front of me, I have several bowls that I've already started prepping uh, with onion and garlic. I'm also uh, going to stuff the peppers with some peppers of different colors, yellow, green, and orange. Um, I also have zucchini, and I have spinach I'm gonna use, some diced tomatoes, um, and mushrooms. So all that's going to be stuffed in the peppers. I'm also going to saute everything. First step that I'm going to do is the, I have peppers that I've already prepared. So what you do with peppers is you take the stem off by taking uh, a knife and circling around the stem and hollowing out. You want to take the ribs and all the garbage out, and that's where you could stuff them. But first, I want to pre-cook them in the oven for about 15 minutes and take them out and that's when I'm going to stuff them with the mixture of turkey and vegetable. First thing I'm gonna do is preheat the oven before I even do that. So it's at least preheated while I'm doing the pepper. I'm gonna preheat the oven. And what I, when I moved here, one thing that was very challenging is the screen, especially for someone who's visually impaired. This screen not only was a touch screen, uh, it also, every time you even waved your hand in prox, it would start sounding off all the settings. So my husband created this plastic, it took us a few months to figure it out, this plastic shield that's on the panel, and he cut out circles with um, an electric saw in the exact positions of where the buttons are. So I've memorized these holes in order to know how to set my oven because there was no way, it wasn't just memory work or using bump dots that would work. Because as soon as my hand would wave in front of it, it was like beep, 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 beep. So here I'm just going to set it at 350. There we go, it's pre, there we go, it's preset. I'm gonna go back to my pepper. Where are you? There we go. And I'm just gonna show you how I hollowed these put peppers out for the stuffing. Um, I take my knife and I hold the pepper with my left hand, since I'm right-handed, and place it on the cutting board, holding it upward. 
and I take my big knife and it's, it's difficult to describe exactly the movements I'm doing because if I'm showing someone, just like someone's showing me who's visually impaired, I always get someone to take my hand and demonstrate. And what I'm doing is going around the stem on the top, leaving a bit of pepper and just going around it in a circular motion. And with my left hand, I'm spinning the pepper as my knife is cutting through and it keeps turning. Oh, and now it's cut right out. And so I remove the top. I mean, it's not perfect circle. And there is the seeds. I'm going to slice the seeds away off the top. There we go. And just give the, the uh, little cap the top a rinse. And inside there's ribs and garbage you want to get rid of. So under the running water, I remove all the seeds and the, um, the ribs that, uh, that are inside the pepper. And one thing I keep very mindful of is I constantly keep my hands clean, especially because I'm handling food and I don't have gloves on. So a lot of times in between things that I do is wash my hands. When I was in uh, culinary school, uh, every Everybody in the kitchen had to wear gloves, and as a person who can't see, that was a huge challenge. Initially, it wasn't easy, but after practice, because touching is so important, after practice, I, I got used to it. Um, then it got to the point that whenever I prepared anything in the commercial kitchen that was cooked, I was able not to. Uh, I was able to cook without my gloves on. And if we were doing salads and fruit salads and vegetable salads, anything raw, I had to wear the gloves. Um, so what I'm doing is I took the uh, pepper I cut and added it to all the other peppers that I've already hollowed out. I'm putting it on a pan that, and they're all standing up, stem down, so they can stand up and not topple over. And I'm just going to wrap, wrap them in foil. There we go. I have already the soil on the pan. I'm just wrapping it up like a package. And inside I have seven peppers. Now I'm going to place these in the oven for 15 minutes while I prepare uh, the rest of the stuffing. You know, when, when I think of addiction, I never really thought like, you know, a way to combat it is through food. Um, but before we get into that, Orly, you know, uh, you know, you being a visually impaired person who is doing yes. this, can you kind of give us like a, a little bit of a background of your story? Like, how did you get here today? Where did you start off from? What's your story? Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought we only had a short show going on here. Uh, unless people want a marathon show. Um <laughs> I just moved to Florida a year and a half ago from Canada, and um, I have three kids. I was born in Montreal and had I was born with limited vision. I have um, a form of retinitis pigmentosis called Leber's congenital amaurosis. I know oh, that's, that's, a, that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, I was born with very limited vision, but I did have some vision growing up as a child and through school, but not enough to see the blackboard. I had to read very large print right up to my face, but at least I had a little bit of vision growing up. And in my 20s, it started deteriorating. Um, and when I started working, my career, my, my job life, I was able to use speech and large print together on the computer and for the, for, for the first five years. And by the, the age of 25, 26, it deteriorated where I had to adjust and learn how to solely depend on speech and, uh, and Braille because I did use a Braille display at work. So um, my vision loss was very gradual, but I was always a go-getter. It didn't slow me down. Uh, I have three kids. I was a single mom for about six years. 
and I, I just had to live. However, I think when it completely um, went to nothing, where I had just light perception, I did go through a challenge, a challenging time, and I did struggle with, I guess, in a way, it's like a, a loss. It's uh, you're grieving, and um, there are certain grieving things. The, grieving like, the loss of your sight, right? Of my sight, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and also I noticed that with pregnancies that seemed to speed up the, the vision loss. Um, and I did find out that for women with my eye condition, that is something I was never told that you could actually um, lose vision with pregnancies. I mean, it, it increases the chance and it also accelerates the vision, the progression of the loss. So I was never told that growing up. I was told all kinds of things from doctors, but never that. I, I don't think it would have changed my mind in having ch children, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, however, with pregnancies, not just uh, the vision loss that I experienced, but I noticed I was also experiencing postpartum depression. And a lot of things were piling up as I was getting older and I made some, uh, some poor choices, but um, let me explain that uh, I started experiencing chronic pain and then also the emotional pain that uh, I was prescribed narcotics for legitimate reasons, but the poor choices are that I started depending on them more and more and it was harder to beat that narcotic addiction for, for many years. And um, I want to help others because addiction is rampant out there. It's, it's especially opiate and uh, any type of narcotic addiction out there in the world. It's, it's affecting all walks of life. So that's a, a bit of how um, addiction impacted me. And um, I had twice in my life with... Um, with that narcotic addiction, I almost lost my life and wow. I had to, yeah. And it was out of my hands. I mean, people that uh, are stuck in addiction, really, I, un I understand how it feels and how difficult of a challenge it is. And the reason um, I came to this point with nutrition is that's one, f one tool that helped me to beat addiction. You have to put a lot of tools in practice and a lot of, of different things out there to work together to get out of it. And yeah. it's a process. It's not an easy process, but it's, it's totally possible. All right, Alexa, set timer 17 minutes. 17 minutes starting now. Thank you, my lady. All right, so while that's um, cooking, I'm going to continue chopping all the vegetables for the stuffing. And what I've done was already pre-cut a lot of the vegetables. So here I already have onions chopped. Um, I have the garlic and I will post the recipe. So I've chopped up garlic, but I have one clove to chop just so I can show you how I manipulate the knife and the clove of garlic, um, I use my sense of touch and the positioning of uh, where a vegetable is and the positioning of the knife. And for the garlic, first I go along to, uh, the garlic and slice thin slices and in one direction so that then there's a lot of thin slices. And then I turn it around and chop the other way. But, so then all the thin slices get chopped up and then I just go along and I move it all together. I gather it up and continue to gather it up and chop. I feel, I feel where everything is, where my little pile is and continue to chop through it. Then I check out the cloves, see the size just continue but as you gather it up it's easier to chop it when it's in a pile together 
Um, I've just learned my technique of what works so then even though my fingers are really close to the blade that I don't chop up one of my fingers. We don't need that. It's not an ingredient in this recipe and I need my fingers to continue cooking for everybody. What I'm doing is um, scraping the surface of the cutting board and gathering Bring up the garlic bits onto the blade of the knife and then just sweeping it into the bowl. I have a little glass bowl here that I'm putting all the little garlic bits in. There we go. All right, that's for the garlic. So I have the garlic and onion here. Everything I did, I preheated, I preheated, pre chopped and prepared. Um, I put in a certain order so I can keep organized. I don't have to keep sticking my fingers in every bowl to see what they are. So the next thing I have here are the peppers. I've already chopped most of it up. I'm just going to demonstrate with this one piece. A lot of times how I chop up a pepper or something like this and I want a small dice is I will initially slice it in thin strips in one direction. So it's thin, thin strips side by side. And then I turn it around as it's in thin strips side by side. Uh, I wanna make sure it's all slightly through. And then when I turn it around, I go along the other direction in order to get small dice and little squares. Alexa's good at keeping track of my peppers in the oven, and I will focus on the time. There we go. So now I have all my peppers diced. <clears throat> now, next to the peppers, I have zucchini, and I kept one piece to show you how I diced them into tiny little squares or kind of dice because it is for stuffing. Again, with the, the zucchini, I hold it with my left hand. There, the, the zucchini is round. So I, I do slices going along the side, going along with the whole entire zucchini. Bring the bowl up here. And there we go. Definitely have enough zucchini going on here. Now, I have, oh, my mushrooms are already sliced, so I don't need to worry about that. I have my tomatoes and spinach. <clears throat> so my hopes, my goal is to um, create a cooking show and also to create uh, personal chef experiences of dining in the dark. And it's not just dining in the dark, uh, eating in the dark and seeing what it's like for a couple of hours to eat without using your vision through the eyes. It's also about getting other people to focus on all their other senses. So now I'm just scraping all my little bits into the sink off my cutting board. All right, now it's time to saute. So before we go into how, you know, cooking and nutrition helped you, uh, you know, and how you became a chef, what was it that you were doing um, for work, you know, when you first lost your vision? Ah, uh, all of my uh, career life or adult life, I worked in corporate. So I started off in, uh, back in the, uh, will, will you know about Switchboard? Back oh, yeah. then, there was, oh, I was yeah. a switchboard operator, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they still exist today. You know, if you call oh. a hospital or certain uh, <laughs> corporate campuses, yeah, they, they definitely, they're still out there. They're but still out you there. see, yeah, but before it was this huge console. So yeah. before my time, people were using plugs, like plugging into little holes. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. It, was, it was a big console with buttons so every button was labeled with the person's name and it was specific buttons and then it graduated to uh then you had to remember extensions and so i became a switchboard operator yeah. uh when i was woo, 19 20 and i always always loved talking and helping people so 
that's the first thing I did. And then I went to working for a cell phone company. Back then, Jose, cell phones were, were people <laughs> that had money, uh -huh. business people generally, and they were fixed in the vehicle. They in the vehicle, the car phones, portable. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, when so I started working in the, in the industry as a customer service representative for a cell phone wow. company. And then I graduated uh, well, to like banks. the early 90s, right? The early 90s. Yeah. Were, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just and for it, those of you who are watching or listening on our podcast, um, you know, if you've ever had vision and you're a little older, um, <laughs> if you remember the cartoon uh, Hong, Hong Kong Fui, it was this superhero dog who was a janitor by day and a superhero um, by night. The One of the characters on there was this blonde woman and she would always... She was a switchboard operator. So if you ever seen that cartoon and you, you remember that that machine she had where she would be plugging the the, the little <laughs> wire into the different holes, yeah. that's exactly what Orly is referring to. That's exactly yeah. what she's referring to. It was to. really cool, but those consoles were huge and then they slowly <laughs> evolved. And now, well, now we have internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so, the, so, so initially, just, oh, sorry, ahead. sorry, no, no, go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Uh, initially, um, a lot of what I was told as a younger person was you're visually impaired, you're limited in, I mean, I had so many ideas of what I wanted to do for my own business or career. And there, there seemed to be some barriers put up in, in the way in pursuing certain uh, avenues. So you're always told in school, well, you know, customer service is good for someone who's visually impaired. You know, switchboard operator, of course, that was a biggie. So that's why I entered the workforce with, um, with those jobs. And mm -hmm. by the time I left Canada, I was working for a major uh, bank and I became a credit analyst and then a manager. So I was helping other analysts with their work. And I was... Um, doing credit um like if somebody applied for a visa or an overdraft they would submit an application and i would look at the application see if it's something they could they could handle yeah. and uh, i loved it but you know what i loved the most was becoming a people manager where i was helping others in their growth and that and my passion for cooking was always there it wasn't that I ever thought of working at a restaurant or, or a hotel or anything like that. Um, but my passion for cooking is, has always been there and I'm really good at it and I'm very creative. Um, but I want to develop my passion for cooking, uh, for helping others and also for speaking. I want to put that all together and create mm -hmm. something incredible. Initially, when you're sautéing, you could start on, on medium, medium, medium high-ish until you get a good sizzle going. And I'm going to add a couple of spoonfuls of olive oil. All my uh, measuring tools are in braille, so... I have my my uh, spoons, my cups, everything is uh, marked. So I'm just gonna preheat the uh, pan first before adding the onion and peppers. And while that's preheating, I just, in this recipe, you can add any types of spices you want. I picked whatever smelled good to me, this, whatever mood I was in today, I have a Mediterranean sea salt, which has a whole bunch of herbs and uh, salt. And I have a, a lovely spice mix called O Canada. And it has a whole mixture of different herbs and spices. So they go well together. You know, a lot of times, unless I'm following a specific recipe for a meal, I just go into my, this is my uh, spice rack. <laughs> It's huge, it's a whole big, big deep drawer. So I went in here, I said, mm, this smells good, that smells good. I know what my uh, kids like, husband likes. So nothing is so rigid in the kitchen that you have to use only whatever. 
but for this recipe you could use whatever is calling to you i found this on amazon i love it well i didn't my youngest found it i had um a salt and pepper shaker where you had to press a button i always like to have one hand free so i could see with touching how much salt and pepper is coming out and pouring out of the shaker this one you don't have to press a button the previous one i had you had to press this button but this one you just tip it over upside down Yay! it comes out it is so cool i love it so all I do is put my finger underneath the flow of it falling to see how much is coming. Because sometimes it varies the speed, even the salt. And boom, and all I did was tip it upside down. All right, so onions in the pan. Peppers, bye-bye. Okay, when you are sauteing onions, one trick for getting it to, um, to get it to caramelize is to put a little bit of salt. So not, um, not a lot, but just a, a sprinkle of salt will help it caramelize and get translucent. All right, now I'm getting the onions and peppers going and that's just gonna take a few minutes before I add zucchini, mushrooms, and spinach is at the end, because you don't want it to become a mush. So while that's cooking and drying up, I'm going to get the next vegetable that I will be using, which is a zucchini and mushroom. So I always keep myself as organized as possible so I'm not toppling things over. I know where things are. And it just makes life so much easier. Every time I cook in a rush or I wasn't as organized as I am today, it just makes it a little more challenging. I'm just flipping the onions and peppers, getting them tender. One great thing that I love about Alexa is set, setting multiple timers. Alexa, set timer, two minutes. Setting timer, two minutes, starting now. So tell us, you know, through cooking, how does cooking help you, uh, you know, stay clean and stay focused? Um, and how can it help other people out there? Well, um, when I was in the throes of addiction um, and I was taking um, Oxycontin and Percocet, I'll tell you the two medications I was prescribed, I was taking it because I do uh, struggle with chronic pain. And um, of course, stress and depression adds and, and, and definitely intensifies um, pain and inflammation in the body, but I also have had two severe falls when I was young. So that's really what, uh, what started it all. So when I was taking these pills, I would notice, oh, I was stressed. Uh, I was, back then I was in a, um, an abusive marriage that I had to leave with three small children. Well, that was very stressful. So I noticed I would take a pill to help me cope and then when I wanted to stop it was out of my hands I tried three times over a four-year period and at twice I succeeded for a few months and then I would go back um, the third time I started incorporating other things I just didn't go see a doctor and go in for therapy um, I started applying um, I went to a naturopath. Uh, I started exercising in a hot pool or I started going to a gym on a regular basis. One, to start healing my body so the physical pain didn't drag me down. Uh, two, it, exercise is known to help addiction. Movement, physical exercise. It doesn't have to be you know, pumping iron every day, even yoga. I did yoga and Pilates 
which I really enjoyed. Um, but I noticed that if I was in uh, trying to eliminate this addiction and trying to get out of it and beat it, but I didn't eat well, I didn't make the right food choices, it didn't give me the brain, st the, the strength and the clarity to, to, to even have the energy or the will to beat this addiction. So mm -hmm. I had to start making better choices, food choices, lifestyle choices, it all comes together, hand in hand, it all works together. You can't just try to beat an addiction as an example, or try to lose weight and just focus on one direction and that's it. That's all you're gonna do. You have to incorporate a lot of, of different um, modalities and therapies and choices all together to make it work. And it took me a good couple of years. It wasn't an easy addiction to beat at all because the first year it was psychologically, physically, and mentally draining. So that's where eating healthier foods really helped gain that energy and that way it helped me with the momentum and the energy I needed to get through the day to make those choices. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because you know, I know a lot of people out there, they think like when you have an addiction, it's just something you could stop doing, right? Like you could just no. stop and drop it and it's, it's not that easy. And, you no. know, it's not even close to being that easy willpower and just saying I'm gonna stop is there's no way it works it could work temporarily but it comes back and slaps you in the face ten times harder even losing weight you can have all the willpower to eat um, either healthier foods or cut down on your portions or, or whatever follow a so-called diet that I don't believe in um, you can have so much willpower but if you don't incorporate changes like permanent changes it's gonna you're gonna, it's gonna be like waves it comes back and then it, you get better and then you stop it's it's back and forth and the only way to make something lasting is to build that momentum and incorporate all kinds of new things in life and new strategies that work to to make it long lasting Alexa Cancel. I think that's my pepper one. So I'm going to let the onions and peppers continue. And I'm going to go to the oven and remove the peppers that are in there to be cooking. Just grabbing my oven gloves. And I have a rack that I put my hot pans on. Right, I'm gonna put the rack of peppers on that on the counter on top of that rack. And a lot of what I do, it's not that I see that rack here on the counter, is by feel. So now you know I know my kitchen, I know my space. Um, I'm able to judge by feeling around where I put things. At school, it took me a few weeks to acclimate, but it's possible. It just takes time to know your surroundings and learn your surroundings. So I'm gonna go back to my saute and see how they're doing. I think it's, see, I smell a delicious smell of onion caramelized. And that's how I know the sweetness is coming out. There's a certain smell you get used to knowing. I mean, I can't see when it becomes translucent, but I know by the sound and the smell that now it's a good time. Alexa cancel. You see, Alexa just told me two minutes. I didn't even think about that. That is the time. I'm going to get Alexa cancel. I'm going to add my zucchini, my diced zucchini and diced mushrooms. So a lot of time, 
I set the timer, but because I've, I've been doing this for so long and, and it's, it's my passion, uh, I've gotten used to a lot of times I have like my internal time clock that comes out by the sound and by the smell, by using different um, cues, you know, smelling cues, hearing cues. There's so many other ways of, of, of doing it without having the visual cues. And when you tap into listening and focusing on those other senses, there's a lot more detail, a lot more vision. I find that I get way more vision, more more detail than if someone's just using their naked eye. They don't get as much information. So now all I did was um, spread out the mushrooms and zucchini into the pan and stir it into the onions and peppers. And I'm going to let that cook for a few minutes. Alexa, set timer three minutes. Every few, I don't know, every 30 seconds or so, I just go and flip my pile of vegetables. And I, I, I just visualize it in my head that I've turned a pile on the bottom left. And then I go to the bottom right and top left, top right. So I'm trying to be as thorough and getting the vegetables to flip and sizzle on every side. Then I just leave it alone, let it be a thing. Now, while that's happening, I'm bringing over my spinach. And tomatoes, spinach, tomatoes, and last but not least, garlic. Delicious. Now, I've never made this before. It's a last minute recipe that I found that incorporates a lot of delicious, healthy vegetables that I like and the turkey. Alexa cancel. I'm just going to add some of my Oh Canada. I love calling it Oh Canada. And I just sprinkle. I've gotten used to how much to put in. I mean, I have the recipe and things to be measured out, but I just I'm about to say what? Eyeball it? I don't know. Whatever other eyeballs I have. My eyeballs are in my nose. They're in my ears. There we go. Mm -mm. That smells so good. A lot of flavors going on with the different vegetables. I'm going to add the spinach. Could be only maybe one, maybe one few minutes, just to wilt. That's all you really want to do. Well, mix it into this lovely mixture of vegetables. So today you're witnessing. Me prepping or cooking this just the first time, me too. I've never made this, so why not? I love creating things and doing new things and trying foods from all over the world. Some pepper. Funny because I, I get a lot of sighted people. I say, How did you know that was pepper? It's because I smell and I organize things. And after a while, you just know where everything is. It becomes a system. Even if um, you don't have a lot of experience cooking, like I do, if you could just slowly develop your own system, 
in what works and where you want things on your right, on your left. So what I'm going to do now, because the garlic's in there, I'm just going to put a well in the center of the pan, throw my garlic in to the middle, let it cook. Putting it all in there, let it cook for about 30 or 40 seconds before I add the liquid, which is the, the crushed tomatoes, light crushed tomatoes. Because garlic, you don't want to add garlic when you're adding your onion because then it, it gets overcooked. And when you have overcooked garlic, it's bitter. You get like a bitter taste in your mouth. That is a culinary trick that not everybody knows about. Just add it right near the end. There we go. And now I'm going to add the tomato paste. Uh, oh, I forgot to say that in this crushed tomato mixture in the bowl, I added two heaping tablespoons of tomato paste. So it thickens while it's cooking. Now, just so you guys know, today, everything I chopped and prepared and everything I'm sauteing here is double the recipe because my family loves that. So I'm just going to get this going and cooking and melding in all the flavors. Mm -mm -mm. All right, time to this cook for a while and all the vegetables are nice and tender. I'm just taking everything out of the frying pan and I'm going to put it here in a bowl that I have to my left side. Oopa. Alexa, cancel. Most of the time, I'm right on the money with time of when I do things just by instinct. I love it. So you know you're 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 losing your vision. Um, yep. You have kids. You're getting out of a relationship. Uh, you know you're having to deal with uh, becoming uh, you know newly blind. You know you were vision yes. impaired, but eventually you lost your sight. You know you got addicted. You have to deal with addiction. Um, and then you start finding other ways to deal with this addiction. Um, so, I mean, you know, how did you come to discover that food and nutrition was a good way to battle this? Um, how? By, by pro trial and error. And it's only natural that food, and I'm not saying become a vegetarian, a vegan, um, Everything, honestly, I know people hear this over and over again, everything in moderation is fine. Um, you want to have your cake once a week, fine. Don't say, oh, I can't have it forever. But if you do things in moderation, uh, everything is possible. But it's only natural to eat healthier foods, and especially incorporating plants. Even if you have a small piece, you know, your, your filet mignon or your steak or your uh, chicken, uh, whatever, don't cut whatever you want, but incorporating healthier ways of preparing food and healthier options really gives you the stamina, the physical and the mental clarity and energy. I, I mean, I've gone through trial and error and testing the waters, we all do that. And that's, it's through learning and, and uh, through time. And I did things like juice cleanses. It wasn't easy at the beginning, but then when um, I started detoxifying and getting all the stuff out of my body that wasn't serving me well, I started feeling better. When I started eliminating more he heavier foods, any processed foods, any heavy meats, and only eating healthier fats, like incorporating these, these things, I started understanding and feeling it. So I was teaching myself to listen to my body and listen to my brain, um, and also get out of my head, because 
I think we're our own worst enemy. When I started really listening to my heart and my inner voice to guide me and trusting it, I started making better choices and seeing the difference. But it took time. It does take time. There was no, you know, like that pill that I took before. It was a quick fix. It felt good in the moment. But guess what? The bad feeling came back to haunt me. Um, so when you make better choices, you feel the difference. I started trusting my body and seeing the difference. So would you say like this was the beginning of your, your uh, journey of becoming a chef? Oh, for sure. Um, first of all, healing from everything I had gone through in life and through the physical and the emotional challenges I struggled with. Um, it took, it took years. Um, so it wasn't just yesterday kind of thing. And mm -hmm. because I always, since when I moved out of my parents' home, I was 18. I'd never really been allowed in the kitchen. My mother <laughs> didn't teach me how to cook. But when I was forced to cook for myself, being on my own, um, I really, it came naturally. So it's just like a, an artist who has that natural talent. For me, food and creativity with food and the passion for it was always there. And the love of food. Like I light up when I think of food and, and um, uh, different eating foods from different parts of the world and finding recipes and, you know, tweaking them and making them what I think would be good. And also I love when people enjoy themselves. So they're sitting at the table and just loving it because of something I created. So to me, that's my art form. Bingo, and and yeah. as soon as I moved out on my own, I discovered it because I had no idea of how to do things in the kitchen. And mm -hmm. I did it as a, a person with limited vision because there are other ways of, of managing in all aspects of our lives, lives. And for me in the kitchen, maybe I couldn't see uh, with my eyes, but I focused on all my other senses that allowed me to, to cut and to learn how to slice and chop and learned how to be safe around the oven. And it's, it's not hard for me now, but it's practice. And all I could say truly over the years that I discovered is real vision, detailed vision, true vision does not come from the, seat, from the physical eye. I really, really believe that if we, all of us, focus on our other senses, you gain so much more information, so much more detail from the hands, from smelling, from hearing, from there's so many times, even when I was cooking, uh, that just from my sense of time or the feeling of time passing, I knew when something was ready uh, versus, you know, the timer going off. So here I was doing something here, the timer went off and I anticipated it just by the smell and by focusing on all my other senses to know when something was ready or needed to be flipped or stirred. And uh, true vision comes from all of our other senses. I love that you say that, you know, and that can apply to everything, right? It doesn't just have to apply to the kitchen. It could be any goal that someone might set for themselves, you know? Correct. I always tell people, just because you lose your sight doesn't mean you can't do the things you did before. I mean, you might do it a little differently, but you yes. still can do it, right? Like before when you were sighted, you might be able to reprint. And when you lose your mm -hmm. vision, you can't reprint anymore, but you still have access to things like Braille, which is very important. Uh, Correct. You, know, you have screen readers that will read to you. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you might not be able to drive, but you have access to things like Uber and Lyft, you know? Yep. So, I mean, as it's kind of like either you adapt and you do things in a different way or Correct. you just stay still and don't go anywhere. And stay you know? stuck in life, but it's, exactly. it's, not, it, exactly. it's not vision loss that keeps someone stuck. You can have someone full vision they have the, you know, they could drive, whatever, but they're stuck too. It's our limited thinking that keeps mm -hmm. us stuck. It's not the lack of a, a sense, hearing, seeing, walking. It's our limited thinking or, or even having all those senses. People, it's our heads that play that game.
and it, our limited thinking. And, and Jose, you know, it's interesting that you, the reason I even say that vision comes from so many, uh, if you focus in on your other senses that you can gain information, it also comes from seeing and talking to sighted people and seeing how I, I always, when I was younger, I always thought sighted people saw everything. And it's not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. You'd be surprised assume with what that. they miss. <laughs> yeah, and I would say over the years with my kids or husband, oh, can you go grab me the salt? Uh, that's a French thing. Everybody laughs at me. Go grab me the salt. It's because when I speak French, <laughs> when I translate words, you know, I could say go uh, close the lights it's instead of turn off. Okay, so I'd say go grab the salt. I, I really need it. It's in the kitchen on the counter. They're going, Orly, no, it's not here. I said, I, I know exactly where it is. I'm sure I left it there. No, 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 it's not here. I can't see it. And they're, they're searching everywhere. Guess what? I get up, my hand goes, boom, right where I remembered leaving it. It was right, oh my God, where, I didn't see it was there. I said, but you, you're looking. How could you not see? And then I started realizing, oh, <laughs> 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 you know what's kind of crazy it's a little similar it's not the same exact thing but like i've noticed since like i lost my sight like i'm i think people who are you know low vision or who are totally blind who have to depend on the other senses i think they start to like be a little more aware of their surroundings like i could be walking uh down the sidewalk and i know that there's something by me before i even come up to it because like i could sense it i could feel it like it's like a correct it's like a magnet correct. you know i feel like a magnet like i i just feel the the energy <laughs> or the force i don't know what it is but it's like i could tell that it's there without even coming into contact with it correct and, so and unlike many senses. people i can go somewhere and remember a lot of landmarks a lot of things that are there and know when I'm walking or coming to it because my memory is so keen. I have, I could go somewhere once, even a kitchen. People say, how, how could you remember where this is and that is? And not just in my own kitchen because I can run around my house <laughs> with my eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when I go into an unfamiliar kitchen, I mean, at school, I was working in a commercial kitchen that was according to every sighted person that came across that came across me in there this is such a dangerous environment for someone who can't see but guess what i was actually the safest one there because i remembered where everything was um i was more careful i remembered things um also a lot of my classmates and teacher had burnt themselves or cut themselves chopping i never did once I mean, it's an accident for them, of course. Accidents happen, even to blind people. Uh, but I never did. I never did. I never burnt myself going into this commercial oven because I would situate myself right in the center. I would reach knowing where I left my pan. Or it's, it's because I f you, I'm using all my other senses to their max. Um, and a lot of people think that blind people have all their other senses heightened. I, I don't agree with that. Everybody's different. Um, if you start focusing on some of your other senses, yeah, you, you start hearing the messages they're giving you because yeah. you're not relying only on vision from the eyes. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So I never cut myself during the whole time I was in school, never burnt myself. I was even trying to teach my uh, my classmates tricks like chopping an onion. I, I closed my eyes and they wouldn't try. <laughs> they wouldn't dare. <laughs> I'd say you don't have to try chopping onions. Just close your eyes like I do. <laughs> they didn't take me up on that one. <laughs> so you know what? After exactly. saying all that, is there are benefits <laughs> to being no, for visually sure. impaired? Very sure. You know, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'm sure you would love to have your sight back. I mean, but like, yeah. I mean, think of the different opportunities and the different things you've done that you might not have done if you didn't lose your vision, you know? Correct. You yeah, know, it's, that it's is always very the, true. It's always based off perspective, right? Do you look at it as if the glass is half empty or if the glass is half full? You know, that's, that's the way I look at it. And sitting here, first of all, moving to Florida was a dream since I was almost 16 because my oldest brother Avi moved here and 
I would come visit on vacation. I love the beach. I love the, the, the smells. I love the palm trees. So since that age, that's all I've been focused on is to move here. And I made it happen. You, you make things happen in time, in their own time, not my time. But, mm. <laughs> but I, and also my glass has always been full, even though I've had struggles in life with different things, with, with myself, um, with things I couldn't control, um, being in a, a, a physically and emotionally abusive marriage and getting out with three small children, that's a huge undertaking. And people say, how did you do that with three small children? You can't see. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. We, when, you're, when your glass is full, half full, 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 three quarters full, you ha that, that's why I've been able to, to rise above. I'm not a survivor. I don't look at it that way. I think that's a, I, I don't like that term. I, I've risen, I've risen above things all the time and going down is only human. So I think we expect too much of ourselves, too much perfection, too much. And yeah. going down and experiencing difficult times, that's made me so much stronger that's why I'm sitting in this chair in Florida and I've graduated culinary school because I've made a lot of mistakes in life and then learned from them. That's how you learn, yeah. Now I'm going to saute the turkey. <laughs> in you go. So now I've taken my amount to double, my double amount of turkey. For this recipe, the single recipe, which will be on my website, uh, it's one pound. I have about two pounds of, of turkey going here. And I'm just picking it up. So I threw it in the frying pan, literally. Nah, not literally. I put it in the frying pan and it went like a big ball. And now I'm going to break it up. As it's cooking and as you break it up into little chunks, it will get quite like a crumbly texture. So I'm, I'm slicing it with my spatula. I'm just like chopping it into bits. And then I'll let it cook on one side and then flip on the other. Just chop, 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 chop. There we go. I will add some salt and pepper. I'll come to mama. Woo! And I just wave the shaker in a circular motion around the frying pan. Make sure I cover all the surfaces and oh well, you get a few grains of salt and pepper on the outside. This means clean up later. So just like ground beef, you just wanna brown the turkey. You don't wanna overdo it because it'll cook with the peppers when it's in the oven. Just enough to get browned. Now it's starting to cook some. And it's interesting, I'm gonna describe what I feel when I put in ground anything, turkey, beef, it's, when it's raw, it's more of a, a bouncy texture. It's when it's raw, it's more of a, a solid texture when you touch it with your spatula. But as it's cooking, if you scrape along the meat and it's cooking and it's getting more crumbly, you could feel the texture with the spatula. It gets more uh, firm, more, uh, you feel the chopped pieces, the separation of the pieces. It's not all one and it's not all gummy and bouncy. It's more, more firm, more, it's, it's a different feel. All right, it's starting to sizzle. It's obviously cooking and hot, not this cold meat on a hot frying pan. You can hear the difference. Uh, every time I flip a section, it's coming apart easily. It's not all clumped together. And the sound is different. It gets higher, a higher pitched sound. It's really cool. So ground turkey doesn't take as long as ground beef. So I believe from the sound and the texture that this is enough. 
browning and flipping and sauteing and chopping and slicing and dicing and all right i'm taking my bowl of vegetable mixture and throwing it in the pan Woo! timber there it goes all in there we go now i'm just mixing everything together and just gonna saute it enough just to blend it all together just uh one more minute and then i could turn it off and of course it needs to cool a little before i handle it and stuff those peppers because well i just don't want to burn myself today and i know my hands will have to get in there perfect yeah make sure some of the liquid evaporates and it thickens as a tomato paste cooks it thickens up the contents of whatever you're cooking with it all right so now i'm just gonna turn the burner off and get it to somewhat of a cool so then i can handle the meat and stuff the peppers so let's talk about your culinary your uh, your, your background with the culinary school like how did you find yourself there um what did you have to do to get there you know like what what are some things that you did like when you were in the commercial kitchen to make things uh more accessible to you whether it was chopping the onions or the vegetables or you know mm -hmm. serving like what, what did you do Whew. um first of all i never ever considered going to culinary school even though i enjoyed cooking so much and and did a lot of research and creating recipes of my own um i even thought of a cookbook but i never thought of culinary school it was by accident and that's what happens in life if we're open to just going with the flow of life, things come that you never even think about. So when I moved here, I needed to reestablish my life and my new home, learning the environment and getting mobility instruction and, and just growing because this was a, a new place for me. It wasn't mm -hmm. a vacation anymore, this was life. Um, I knew I didn't want to go back to corporate, so, I was open to figuring it out and it took a while, but the reason it came about is I spoke to, at the lighthouse of Broward, I was talking to a gentleman who had gone through a baking program because his passion was baking. And when he lost his vision, so he's, uh, he has some residual vision, but he lost his vision before he was in a very different field in the construction field. Then he started to pass time and to also heal from his loss, he started doing what he always loved, baking. So he went and took this uh, program at school. And that's what, that's what um, was the opening for me. I thought, hmm, I said, I wouldn't want to go to baking, pro, you know, baking school. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. do the culinary part. And we started talking about it and he just said, you know, why don't you just look at it, call the school, call the instructors, you know, because I went through the program there. And that's how I started looking at it um, for myself. And I said, hey, why not? I don't know what is in store. I know my, my, my passion all throughout my life has been advocacy and speaking and um, doing a lot of um, work, even though I worked in a corporate job per se uh, what I did on a voluntary basis was speaking um, a diversity at work I got heavily involved in our diversity council and that's where I had fun and my passion came out was was helping others through some of my stories and of what worked for me um, so I went to culinary school trying to see how I could bring this out to the world in food and inspiring others to creating change in their lives. So it just unfolded that way. And it's, it's going to continue evolving because as soon as I graduated, well, now life changed for everybody. So I'm trying to figure out what that looks like for me now and how to bring it out 
out there to others. Um, and now we're stuck at home and I don't like technology. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a hands-on in, you know, in person kind of person. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure it all out as, as the time moves forward yeah. because I could have a plan, but it always never goes as planned. So you have to be open to change and to evolving and, and exploring other ways of doing things. Now, when you were studying, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, oh. I'm guessing you have to read recipes and, you know, you have to do yes. certain things. Did you use any type of technology to do this? Did they offer to you in Braille? I mean, how, how are you handling all this? So you did. That was the second part of your question because my answer before was long-winded. <laughs> so <laughs> how I did it in the classroom and in the kitchen itself, the commercial kitchen, first of all, um, certain things had to be accommodated, uh, such as the textbook had to be um, in audio. Mm -hmm. And I used, uh, I used different tools. So for, for getting my textbook, I, I went on and uh, got it on Bookshare. Mm -hmm. um, when it came service. to, yeah, yes. Uh, also, uh, through your store, I got my OrCam. Yay! There you go. <laughs> my toy. So how that helped me in class is we got a, I, oh my goodness. Um, I'm just reaching forward and grabbing some of my books and papers. Every day we would get handouts. Well, it was always on paper and the teacher didn't always have it in soft copy. Uh, the OrCam was very useful. One right now in front of me for your viewers, Jose, I have these thick binders of handouts I got. I don't know if it's like a thousand pages. And a lot of times our handouts were recipes that we would have to prepare that night that I would get right at the last minute. Um, the instructor, the teacher couldn't give it to us ahead of time or me because um, she would just research and print something out for everybody in the moment. So the OrCam helped me. It also helped me in the kitchen because if there were labels or things I needed to find myself, I had the OrCam. Uh, and I, I kept it safe because it wasn't like having a scanner. I couldn't bring yeah. that into the kitchen. Oh, so it was yeah, portable. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't possible. And in, 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 in a kitchen, there's knives, there's heat, there's water. So having a scanner was impossible where the OrCam was very beneficial, especially when I was having to memorize that recipe and work on a team, I couldn't always say, oh, can you reread that? Can you reread that? I would go back and refer to my recipe um, in the moment and in the yeah. kitchen. So it was so useful that way. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, that's how real life works, right? Like sometimes things yeah. just happen on, the, on a whim, on the drop of a dime. And, you know, it's good to yeah. know what's out there, whether you're a chef or you're in mm -hmm. corporate or, you know, whatever it is you're doing. It's good to know what you, what's available out there to, you know, keep you in the game. Um, right. And what I would do when I got home, because I would use JAWS is on my computer, mm -hmm. I would use my scanner. So I do have a scanner for at least scanning the pages into my computer, um, which I couldn't do in classroom. So I used OrCam a lot at school yeah. and I would use my scanner and my computer at home. Wow. Mm -hmm. So then there was a lot of things and memory. I remembered a lot of times, you know, we were, we had to go from one end of that kitchen to another to grab ingredients mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. all over. They could be in a pantry. Things are moved daily. I can't just say I'm going to have my, my salt, pepper, uh, garlic lined up this way. You have hundreds of people going through that kitchen and things are constantly moved. Um, and then there's big freezers, but a lot of times I would remember where certain things were because, you know, I would remember where all the cutting boards were, where all the knives were put, where some people would keep forgetting class by class and they were just all over the place. Yeah. So memory kicked in really well. And one thing they accommodated me was also in the kitchen 
um, a lot of times I worked in a specific at a specific workstation at the beginning and as the semesters were were moving forward and I was working in with teams then then I got to know my surroundings and then I was working from station to station nice so it's a, it's a progress it's, it's a it, it takes time you have to acc acclimate to any change in life if it's a physical change or 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 change in life in general it took me time to get used to the kitchen and to real to know what would work best for me in that kitchen i am now preparing these cook i prepared my stuffing station so i cook these they're so pretty firm okay See how long they have to be in the oven for. Now they're upside down. I'm gonna flip one at a time and stuff. Stuff them and stuff them. Here we go. Okay. So I took the top off. The top fits right in. Ah! Oops! Fell in. Get it out. There we go. All right. So I have this hole. That's where I'm gonna throw the stuffing in. At least try to place it delicately. Right now, I have my pepper and my uh, the pepper in my left hand, and I'm going to put it over the pan and take a spoonful of stuffing. Here we go, and gently place it in so most of it ends up in to the pepper, and I'll keep doing that till it's full, 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 full. I am using one finger. To, on my left hand to push it down, but I try hard to use my fingers as much as possible. So I overstuff it and fill it up. Oh yeah, I said I don't use my fingers as much as possible. I just got a messy hand. Oh well, okay. It's cooking in the oven for the family squish 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 so i fill it and i keep pow um, pounding it down and some of the sauce is draping over the outside which is fine and it's full so i'm going to place the cap on top and put it upside down on my pan there we are let me get these organized okay it's upside down one pepper to do, do one pepper down since it's for my family, 1,000 more to go. <laughs> All right, stuffing, stuffing. I'm stuffing the peppers. The sauce is leaking a little, but that will give the outside some goodness and flavor. I'm shoving them into this pan upside down. There. Make sure I'm organized here so they do not topple over. All right, I think I have only a couple more left to stuff. So what I'm doing, I have a big bottle, Costco size, of olive oil, and I'm slowly gonna drizzle a bit of olive oil over the tops of the peppers, and I'm just using my hand to, and slowly pouring, because this has a big spout, and I just don't want it coming out fast. So I'm just dripping it over the peppers. like so, and then massaging them, making sure they're all glistening and covered and delicious and taking my salt and pepper. Here's pepper, it's all over, all over the peppers. I'm going around each pepper, feeling them all, giving them a nice massage. It'll taste better that way. Give your food a massage. All right, salt. Salt, 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 salt. Oop, and that's plenty. Oop, voila! You have stuffed peppers with turkey and vegetables. I'm gonna cover them for a while just to start getting uh, the peppers to tenderize a little bit with steam. And Maybe the last few minutes, I'm going to uncover it and let the peppers rope a little. 
So right now I'm just going to cover it up with soil and I'm just going to keep it a little loose. It doesn't have to be so tight. And it's going to go in the oven. I'm going to cook it for about 15 minutes and then uncover the foil. There. It's all wrapped up like a package. There we go. Alexa set timer to 15 minutes. So you, you go to school for culinary arts, you get your degree, yep. and now you launch this website mm -hmm. called Nourished by Lights. Where did you get this name yes. from? Nourished? It took me six months. <laughs> I, I, I had people, I would call up family. Think of a cool name. Think of a cool name. And they'd come yeah. up with these names. I go, nah, nah, nah. No, mm -mm. It Nothing clicked in. And then I was looking at lists. I was looking at the, uh, the thesaurus on Google and Googling, mm -hmm. what can I bring out that represents me, food, and my mission? And light, first of all, people have always told me that I'm like light to them. I'm always... Um, like a beacon of hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. A, little, uh, a ray of sunshine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me, sunshine. There you go. <laughs> hey, Jose, even the sunshine girl has fallen, so it's not like I'm always, you know, we're all human. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, my name in Hebrew means my light, Orly, in Hebrew. So, and my mom did not plan on my name. She only thought about it, thought about it the last half hour while she was while I was being born, and um, so Orly is my uh, Hebrew name. It's my given name, and it means my light. I've always felt um, like light in a sense, a beacon of hope. I've always had hope. Plus, I want to nourish people, so I want to nourish them through food. I want to nourish their minds. I want to help people realize that change is truly possible it's it's totally possible i'm i'm living proof that it is and that we're human that we can all move forward and learn from difficult times so that's yeah. how it came about nourished by light by that's me awesome. orly yeah <laughs> you definitely are i mean i'm sure a lot of the viewers can tell you know just from watching this or listening to this online that you are definitely, you know, uh, like a beacon of hope, right? Because I mean, the vibes that you give off and, and you. your personality and the way, you, you know, even just being around you in person, you definitely get that feeling, right? Like when you're around people, you can sense like, this is a good person. This is a person I don't want to be around. And you give off that feeling like, yeah, you know, this is a good person to be around. I need the people like this in my life because they're positive yeah. and they're uplifting and, and you show a lot of that. Thank you. Yeah, that, and it Definitely is true. It's true. And what comes with experience too, Jose, is I could say that it's true and yeah. feel it for a long yeah. time. I didn't have that confidence. People would say things to me and I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Cause I didn't feel it inside. Yeah. And the only reason now I'm where I am is because I'm not just bubbly on the outside and, mm -hmm. and also a go getter. Or I make things happen. It's cause I feel it inside me internally. I have, that true love and acceptance of myself and that yeah. took years too so yeah and I, I love that about you you know like you, you start this this uh is it a website or an organization like, what, what would you call it? it well it's new it's just for now me myself and i and <laughs> so you start um, this it's you start the, yeah yeah website cool. um, so you start and, you start this website nourished by light and yes. it's not like it's not like somebody who hasn't walked in those shoes, right? Like you've been sure. through it, you experienced it, and now you can relate to the people that you want to help, right? I mean, that's yeah. powerful. That's powerful right there. Yes, yeah. I can relate on on all angles and all um, struggles and, and also successes. Yeah. Because people in those moments, those difficult moments, and I don't mean just the substance, issue, uh, difficult moments in, in marriages, relationships, difficult 
accepting uh, my vision loss, everything. So what I want to tell others is that life happens for us and not to us. So we do have control, even though in those moments of substance abuse or the abusive um, relationship I struggled with or the vision loss and all those major trials in life that I had to face, um, I had to learn by going and experiencing those difficult times that, that has carried me through my life. And, and each time I go down, I get stronger when I get up. And I, I want to tell others that change is possible. And it's in those moments, I could see why anybody would feel so helpless or hopeless that you can't envision change. You can't envision in a better life or making those lasting changes because it takes so long and so much effort. Um, it's not a quick fix. All those things came into my mind, but I realized that when I started incorporating different things in my life to better it, to better my physical and mental strength, little baby steps. I mean, those words are there for a reason. It truly is baby steps. And it, when I accepted that it was a process that's when it started getting easier. When I started feeling like I was moving and flowing and not adding resistance, uh, the pressure, like going against you know, a river flow, you feel that pressure. And it's also mental pressure. When I started just flowing and riding those waves in the right direction and just putting steps, moving forward little by little, it all started making sense and I accepted all the time it, it takes. I wasn't just looking for that quick fix anymore. Wow. So one of the things, Orly, that I like to um, ask the people who join me on here is, you know, for the people listening and watching, you know, what are some, I mean, you pretty much just did it, but like, if they, if they, if they want to go to school to be a chef or, mm -hmm. you know, they, they want to follow a career, but they were yes. afraid to do it, you know, what best advice <laughs> would you tell them? Um, interestingly enough, when I started my website and putting things out there, I had three people from one, two from Canada, one from a different country, um, reach out to me on Facebook. They were blind and they said, you know what? I've always thought of being uh, going to culinary school. I just never thought I could. People in my life tell me I should pursue it, but like, how did you do it? Because they don't see it's possible. They put all the roadblocks of why it's impossible in front of their eyes let's just say. So you put all those roadblocks of why it wouldn't work instead of starting to focus and putting your energy towards how you could make it work. So yeah, I had to do things differently. Yeah, I have to make sure I don't slice my fingers off, but I, I've learned how to do that by touch. It's totally possible to chop onions fast, to slice tomatoes thinly or cucumbers by feel. Everything is possible. I mean, there's certain logical things that as um, visual, blind, visually impaired people, we cannot do, even though I'd love to be a pilot or, or, <laughs> <do we> or <laughs> <laughs> drive a Ferrari down the highway. Um, you have to be logical and, and, and realize that there are certain limitations, but there's a lot we can do, even though it seems like it's impossible. Because it is possible. A lot of people would ask me questions and I just answered that at the beginning. I didn't know if it was possible, but it was a great idea to pursue and go and ask the people at school questions. Uh, go and you know, ask chefs. I would go to a restaurant and I would ask to speak to their chef. I said, this is what I'm thinking. You know, I just get different people's perspective. So what I did was I didn't shut the door and say, nope. It's not going to work. Too many barriers, too many uh, impossibilities. 
I opened that door and I walked through it little by little by asking a lot of questions and realizing it, realizing that there is a way and making it happen. Time to get my masterpiece out of the oven. Man, this house smells divine. So I'm opening my oven. I'm going to cancel out, make sure to always turn when it's ready, turn the oven off. Never want to forget that one. I'm reaching forward, grabbing both sides securely because it's heavy and hot. I'm moving towards my rack here on the counter slowly and with my elbows and my arm, forearm, I'm able to feel and slowly place it down because it's hot and the last thing I want to do is put it on the um, counter, burn the counter, turning the oven off, closing the door, and voila, my masterpiece, stuffed peppers with turkey, all kinds of delicious vegetables, zucchini, mushrooms, spinach, sauteed, uh, I have peppers inside the peppers. Mm -mm -mm. So thank you for joining me. It smells delicious. If I open my front door, I think my neighbors are going to run over. So I'm going to keep it shut and uh, enjoy just us, the family. Guys, stay safe and thank you for joining me. That's really good stuff. I, 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 I'm really glad that, you know, you've taken time to, you know, show us how you cook in the kitchen, talk about your life, uh, you know, like it's, I feel like this stuff is really powerful and someone out there is definitely going to benefit from this, you know, um, yes. because we all go through similar situations. We just deal with them a little differently. And it's always good to, to hear from somebody who has gone through a similar situation and see how they came someone out. Someone is at the front door. Yes, absolutely. Hey, that was Alexa, by the way. Nice. Love Alexa. <laughs> if your viewers wanted to know. Sorry, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. All I so, want to say, so, hey, all I want to say is uh, I loved talking to you. And, and I want, if I'm able to help one person with my message and with my experiences, that's all that matters to me. That I, I will say that I've, pursued my passions, my goals, my dreams, and I've had a positive lasting or an impact on someone. And that's all that matters to me. And that would say in my life, I've, I've met my, you know, I, I, I was here for a reason and, and I did it. And I, I, that's how I feel. Yeah. Well, you're definitely a beautiful person, Orly. You really are inside and out. You're a good person. I appreciate Anyways, guys, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, if you look in the show notes, I'm gonna provide uh, information to Orly's website. Uh, we're gonna have some information to the recipe that you were able to witness her cooking, and all that good stuff. Uh, Orly, again, I, I appreciate you so much for joining me today. Uh, it was and definitely a pleasure, and, and and hearing your story. I mean, I you know I, I I've read about it, just not into detail, you know. And to hear you talk about it, I mean, to me, that's, that's going to make me think today for sure. So I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really mean it. <laughs> You're great too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. Well, that's Orly. I'm Jose, and we are going to be signing out.